One night, about a year after Beth had passed, I went to the hospital, and the doctor said, you may have cancer of the skull. I told him, I don't have that. I'm Apache, but we don't get that. Oh, I'm half white. So I went to the hospital. As I parked there, there was no cars in the parking lot. So I went in, it was cold, Colorado, 24 years in Hawaii. This was not cool. Went in, started working on it, said, oh, it's not cancer, it's some kind of something. We cut it out, you're right. He had taught me that we're gonna take a piece of your skull out, put a screen in there, and of course I'm saying, you know, what are you doing, Beth? I'm having dreams. Is that my fault? I'm having dreams where she's watering the garden in heaven and turns around, I tap her on the shoulder and she's like, what took you so long, big daddy? And I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> this Apache may have to walk the plank. I'm afraid of heights, I may have to jump because that's maybe what's happening. Go to the hospital, it's my mind, okay? I'm strong. Strong mind, raised assembly of God, strong. See, miracles at nine. They call me, lay hands on him, get him out of that chair. So I'm raised. I was, went to the hospital that night, they did the operation, you're okay, you can go home. I walked outside and it was snowing so bad, the wind was blowing and my hair looks like that Dima guy when it goes out like that, short in a cone. <laughs> I look in the mirror, of course, always oh, all the cars I walk by. And I see that and I go, oh my God, where is my car? When I got here, there was one, there's 300 now. So I start walking, right, in Jesus' name, please, can you ever, is, is being cold in the Bible where it gets you warm? So I went inside, told security, I gotta have, I, where's my car, please you guys, go get it. So they brought it up to me. I was like, that's so nice, got in it, went home on the way, I almost made it. Because of the Michael Jackson era, they do not give alleged celebrities pills. So I'm like dying, right? Here, take three Tylenol. What? <laughs> you nuts? So almost home, I see relaxed, I look down, there's a radio. The guy's security forgot, left it. I drive all the way back, give him his radio, because he done me right. On the way to my house, I pulled my car over, and I go, this is enough. I've never told this story like I'm going to tell you. I drew a my heel and my boot, a circle around my car. I don't know why I did all this, well I do now. But I said this here, I consecrate this, what am I saying here, holy ground. That's gotta be in the Bible, I thought. So I got in the car and I said some of the things like this, listen, not just for physical, but mental, friendship, kiss me, smell me, tell me you love me. I gotta have a woman, she's up there jamming with Gabriel, they can't get her out of the computer room, and I'm down here bawling and going through this, people offering me love that, <laughs> most of them's first names were Satan. <laughs> Is that better? Is that better, you like how I said that? So, I said, listen, so I'm starting to go, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna put God in a trick bag and I'm gonna see how he answered Adam's prayer for a woman. I'm gonna duplicate it and e-haw. I started reading on the way there, I read my Bible on my phone, it said in Genesis, for God does not expect a man to be alone. And I went, what? Oh, that's right, after our own image and his own likeness, he's got all the parts I got. And he knows what lonely is, that's why there's God the Father God the Son, and Mama the Holy Ghost. So, I, I pull over, I went as far, I've never told one this to say, I look and I see Adam is moi moi sleeping. God wakes him up and goes, hey, come here, let me show you something. I thought Adam woke up, there she was, my rib hurts, hey, woman's made out of your side, not your heel, and she's there. No. God said, wakey, wakey, brother. I got something to show you. Stand up, come here. Adam walked up there, and there was a rock and a bush, and in between them stood the most beautiful woman, naked as a jaybird he ever saw. And he said, oh, my God. Whoa, man. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to name her. God said, that sounds good. 
So you mean, God, that you found the woman and brought her to the man? I'm getting off of Christian.com. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think there is such a thing. So I said, it's up to you. And I declare that. And the guys have thrown up on me for 40 years. I've told every one of them about Jesus. I've beat down over 10,000 men and stunned and shot over 1,500. I am your son. I am your warrior, your soldier. You think if you'd have had me instead of Peter, I'd have cut that ear off just like him. I might have sunk in the water, but when that cock started crowing, I'd have choked that chicken to death. <laughs> That's what I said. Do I have to go ahead and sacrifice a lamb? I thought that's already been done. Because there's two sides of this corner, Jesus. I don't want to go back, but since they don't throw you in jail anymore, <laughs> I could be charged, never charged a racketeer, and I could build a hell of a gang. I said, please, Lord, I need a woman. I, like, I don't care what tribe she's from. I want a tall one and a skinny one. And I want one that speaks in tongues like my mother. Can I stop right there and you take over? That's where I was, so you know that. How many minutes is that? We're good? No. Oh, we have to have more. Go. Sorry, but I have to get through who I, what state of mind I am in right there. Go ahead. And then, so here's Betsy. Hey. Hi. So uh, in 2015, um, my husband was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, which is a blood cancer that grows in your bone marrow. And in December of 2018, he went home to be with the Lord. And um, I, I, ooh. I just wanted to die, and uh, I begged the Lord to take me home. I can't, I can't do this. I can't live like this, um, and I just wanted to go home. And then I got a letter in the mail, and it was addressed to me, and in the return address it said, Bob Crane, and underneath his name it said, Heaven. Is that amazing? <laughs> and I got six letters total um, that came a couple of weeks apart. And every one of those letters were filled with, you are the daughter to the Most High King. Put your crown on. Lift your chin up. And you stand up. And you walk in all that God has called you to. Amen. So months. I laid on the floor screaming and crying and begging God. And he gave them to his brother, though, right? Uh, he gave them to his brother, mailed them he to me. He didn't send them from heaven. We're not those kind of <laughs> freaks. Okay. Okay. Obviously. Yeah, we're real. Um, and God started speaking to me in a way that he had never spoken to me before. In my grief and in my pain, he started calling me to himself. And he started showing me things and talking to me about all that he still had for me. That because Bob had gone home, that my life wasn't over. That I had a destiny that was written before time. That he knew what was, that this was all coming. And he started asking me if I believed that. And at first, the question was very difficult um, because I'm in so much pain and I'm grieving so terribly that uh, do I believe that God didn't take Bob away from me? But the truth is, is that I had to wrestle with God over that because I was hurting so badly, but I don't believe that. God took Bob from me. I believe ca cancer's from the pit of hell. Yeah. And, um, but I also knew that Bob had gone home, and I was clinging to those letters with everything that I had, and God started saying to me, do you want all that I have for you? Do you want all that I've called you to? 
Do you want to know all the things that, that I have planned for your life even after Bob has gone home? Then you better get up. You better get up and stand up and come get it. Come chase after me. Come get all the things that I have for you. Because this isn't it. So I fought every day for six months. My grief, my pain, my healing. I wanted my soul healed. I wanted everything that God had for me. So I started chasing after it. And I went to Arizona with a friend of mine, um, my mentor and very, very dear friend is Katie Souza, and she has a ministry in Arizona, Katie Souza Ministries. And we went down there, and I, uh, I spent a week with her. And while I was in the hotel with my girlfriend, she's pulling up uh, Bethel Music on YouTube, and she says to me, oh my gosh, Beth Chapman passed away from cancer. And I start crying because at that point I'm about six months in, and even the word cancer makes me start crying. Mm. And and uh, after I realized after a couple of minutes that I was crying over somebody I didn't even know, and I said to her, "Who's Beth Chapman?" <laughs> and she said, "Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife." I'm like, "Okay, who's Dog the Bounty Hunter, and what kind of name is that?" <laughs> Remember now, she's a rancher <laughs> on a real ranch. So yeah, cattle, all that stuff. This she is. pulls up a picture of Dog and Beth, and she holds it right in my face. And I'm like, nope, I have no idea who that is, and that guy needs a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so the next, we go on about the day, and the next day she comes in the bathroom, and she says, the Lord gave me a word for you, and I really need you to keep your mind open, <laughs> but can I share it with you? And I was you like... You know what's coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. And she said, God told me that you're going to meet Dog the Bounty Hunter and that you guys are going to change lives together. And I saw... Hallelujah. I saw a limo pull up to a curb, and... You were dressed up, and I was sitting next to you, and the door opened, and Dog put his hand out and took your hand, and you stepped out of the limo. And so I was like, are you nuts or you're what? <laughs> Tell him about the God antennas. Oh, I told her your God antennas are so twisted, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Which now I know that the black limo was the car of mourning and um, that we lifted each other Amen. out of mourning. Amen. And we walked each other through our grief and mourning. And it is scri scripturally okay, <laughs> and it's not a felony. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> I'm all in like that. <laughs> so go ahead now, I'm sorry. So she, for the next five days, continues to give me bits and pieces of these things that God has been showing her. And while I continue to tell her to be quiet, because this is never going to happen, and I have a plan for my life. Did you ever go like, bleh? No. Okay. No, no. <laughs> I'm seeing that as she's talking. So. No. Long-haired freak. No. Long-haired half-breed. So <laughs> she's a pure white girl, so you know there. <laughs> so we get home from this trip, and two months later, my grandson's over, and I still have Bob's cell phone on because I just don't have the heart to turn it off yet. And my grandson's playing with the phone, and there's messages on it, which now I'm about eight months into my grieving process, and I'm just not calling people back anymore because I have to keep telling the story about Bob passed away. I end up consoling them and then I get off the phone and I'm a mess for a half an hour. So there's several messages on the phone and I erase the first two. I don't listen to them and this next message starts playing out loud on the speaker and while I'm trying to erase the message and it won't, 
I hear the guy saying, this is Doug Chapman, and I'm looking for Bob. Doug is the secret word here. And my Doug. next door neighbor is Carlos, and he gave me your number. And I thought, oh boy, Carlos was a client of Bob's, and he uh, must not know that Bob passed away, so I should call the, this guy back and tell him, because I can't erase the message anyway. And I called the guy back from Bob's phone. Because I don't go away easy. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear this deep voice answer, hello. Because I didn't know who it was. It said the area code where we're at, I'm in Colorado bearing bet. Hello. Because I thought, who's the, you know, go ahead. I didn't recognize the call. I say, may I speak to Doug, please? Who's this? <laughs> this is Francie. You left a message for my husband. And, and Doug, sorry, I interrupt your luck because I like this thought. Uh, Doug, always, uh, they put, like, when I get something to go, and who's, can I have a number, and a good number, and who do I put on the sack? Dog. <laughs> One G, Snoop Dog is two. <laughs> I go pick up, says Doug. So I get Doug all the time. Go ahead. So I say, I'm really sorry, Doug, <laughs> but Bob <laughs> passed away a few months ago. And the guy starts bawling. And I'm thinking. You said of cancer. Who, and that no. You know? Maybe I did. Okay. And that Bob passed away a few months ago of cancer. Maybe I did say that. That baby starts so crying. So the guy starts crying. And I just I'm got like, out of the funeral. Who, who the heck is Doug? And why is he crying over Bob like this? <laughs> and I hear the guy take a deep breath and he says, my name's not Doug. It's Dog, the bounty hunter. And I just lost my wife a couple of months ago to cancer. So we both start crying. No, I said, this is Dog, the bounty hunter. And it was silent. I go, hello? That happens a lot too. People hang up when they know it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, why are you laughing? Why is that? <laughs> and so I thought, oh, she hung up, right? Hello, hello. And then she goes, hello? So Wait, everything. Miracle, big miracle. She's in Arizona, Colorado. I'm in Hawaii, 24 years. I don't know this redneck. What? And she's a widow. Hands off of widows, guys. You know what it says. You know, I'm like, what miracle? The lady tells her you're going to meet dog and change the world, and we are one brick at a time. And and we're all of a sudden she's on the phone to me. So she's a Christian through all this. Her supernatural button hit right there, right? And she don't know what I stand for. Give them a cigarette and beat them down until they surrender to Jesus. She doesn't <laughs> know that. She doesn't know that, right? So uh, let's fast forward a little bit because we're almost out of time. So the kind, we meet like that. I then, the day of the hospital, see a text come. It's her. Well, I don't wait read a it. Look, wait we're a skipping ahead. Yeah, just wait because right. there's a really <laughs> important part that you're missing. I'm sorry. So while, like a movie is playing in my mind about everything that Paige said to me in Arizona, and I'm thinking, okay, God, no, <laughs> no, this is not happening. Okay, quit with the nose. <laughs> I already said yes. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, you see that? Yeah. Seven baby. months later, I get a call at four o'clock in the morning. Seven months ahead of that now. We're pal, I don't talk again to her. We don't, we don't talk. We had a two-hour conversation. Because I wanted to blow the hospital up. This is the statute of limitations is over. They don't, cry for, they don't get you for crimes anymore anyway. I wanted to go in there and light dynamite, Christian style. To the, here's a grenade in the name of Jesus. To them <laughs> doctors, because they lie like crazy about it. THC and all that li make you live longer in chemo. I go, how come you didn't tell me that? Deepak Chopra's my friend. He did. I didn't study that. Oh, my God. Shit. I was so upset. I really wouldn't do it because I can't get away with it. But I would felt like it. And I was telling her that. It's easy, doggy. She don't know what she was doing, and she was calming me down. So then eight months goes by, then the kind. We didn't talk to each other after that phone conversation, and eight months had gone by, and Your friend called my you. friend calls me at four o'clock in the morning, and I had only told four people that I talked to him, 
And one of these women calls me at 4 o'clock in the morning, and she's hysterical. I've been trying, I've been waiting since 2 o'clock to call you. I was watching Bethel music on We YouTube. know Bethel, right? Yes. How many times do you think I've been on there? None. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, lady. <laughs> okay. Good. I'm watching Bethel Music at 2 this morning, and a Dog the Bounty Hunter interview pops down on my phone, and I thought, Bethel Music, Dog the Bounty Hunter, no way. <laughs> so she watches the video, and he's in California, not in Colorado, on Fox News, and the newscaster says, Dog, you're about eight months into your grieving process now, and I really feel like this is going to be an extension of people you're helping and things that you're One doing. One of your sticks, you know what I mean? You lost your wife, you're getting through, well, you're going to adopt that dog. Here, we're going to send you all the widows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean it. So, um, he says, well, it's so funny that you say that because I called this dirt guy, Bob, and his wife, Francie, called me back. I never heard of the word excavator. I'm so sorry. Is that the word? Yeah. So a dirt guy. I don't know, but you can't say that. It's it's an excavator. It's like a garbage man. He's a garbologist. So uh, <laughs> she's like, yeah, dirt man. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Sorry, Bob. You know that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I call this dirt guy Bob, and his wife Francie calls me back, and I think we really helped each other, and I think God's going to use us together somehow. So back to his hey, back to SUV and the holy ground <coughs> circle that he drew around the truck. It took me a week to, to reach out to him while all my friends and my pastor were saying, Francie, this Something's is God. Up. You have to reach out to him. Okay, We've all been praying about it. Now can I take it from here? Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> So then, now I'm up the hill, pray to the prayer, I'm up there. Just got done saying, do I got to get a lamb? I can't kill things. <laughs> Please, You're, Jesus is the lamb, come on. Boy, a lot of Christians get mad when they even say that, and I never have said it out loud in public, but anyway. <laughs> so I get a text from her. I got this big old band-aid around my head. I'm thanking the Holy Spirit that I prayed in tongues by myself in my car as I pull up the hill because I don't have cancer. And I get a text, I see the name, and I go, you know what? I need to help this lady. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm a caller, right? So I go, she, she the last time she got up, she goes, you never know, someday we might meet for coffee or something. I go, that would be great, coffee. Huh. So uh, I call her up, hi, would you want to meet me for coffee? But I just got out of the hospital, I, got, I had the Band-Aid still on on purpose. <laughs> so I look like Frankenstein with blood coming out of it and stuff. Because I ain't trying to hit on you, mama. Ain't no way. Look. So she walks in the coffee shop, cowgirl boots on, all skinny, tall. I look, I go, uh-oh, she chews tobacco. And I thought, but I ain't kissing her anyway, so who cares, right? But I just need the camaraderie. The scriptures, she was laying on me. I was chasing to kill her. She was laying on scriptures that only I thought about. And when I got home that night, I finally caught the scum. Pure demonic. And once I got home that night, I, the scriptures all day I was thinking, he's got to kill me, carving my name on the rods. I see me walking up. The guy says, listen. Sissy, God opened his eyes. Round about him was camped angels. I'm thinking, okay, Lord, I'm going to the door by myself. I'm going down swinging. I, she's telling me all these scriptures. How could she know? I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Nothing physical yet. <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> and so. That's the picture of the Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had to marry her before she kissed me. So I say to her, get catch the guy, feel all good. I say, listen, I don't want to go on no date or nothing, but do you go on dates? No. Okay, let's change the word, right? Uh, I used to speak with Tony Robbins as a speaker for 30 years, so if that word don't work, let's think of another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So I said, how about a get-together? Well, I don't know. You'd have to first go to church with me. Okay, now I hear the scriptures and all that. What kind of religion are you? Pentecostal? Are you the rattlesnake Pentecostals or the other ones? <laughs> she goes, rattlesnakes. She don't know. She's a rancher. She don't know who dog is, let alone Pentecostal rattlesnakers. And so I said, okay, I'll go. Here we go now, okay? Here's where it happens. Because you're going to do it to me. It better be supernatural. No, I'm d it better be. It's how I've lived. Never got shot. 10,000 arrests. Bullets fly by my head. One hit me in the leg. In the name of Jesus, whose ever name on the ground right now, boy, you're going to listen to me about the Lord. This, it took a lot of... Mm -mm -mm. Holy Ghost. So, I go, I, I tell, she says, you go to church. I go to Pentecostal church. She tells everybody, don't say a word. I got this guy coming. Don't say nothing. Fast forward. I'm in you there. act like they didn't know it was you. Yeah, but no one said nothing. I do not like to take pictures in churches because I think, like Jesus with the bullwhip, I'm in there selfie in his dad's house, right? But no. So, I told her that. She goes, I agree. So, that's how I went in, like undercover, right? So I'm in there. So the pastor's a big, tall white boy's walking up and down. They're doing praise. The spirit's falling. I'm like sucking for air. He goes, oh, my God, this is real Pentecostal. Oh, my God, this is real Holy Ghost. I ain't been there in a while, bro. I'm the leader. I ain't been in them Holy Ghost places. I want my picture and put me on the posters. You know, I got my own church every day with the devil's herd. So I'm in there feeling the power, right? All of a sudden, I hear a word like, show my receipt the DI. And I go, oh, my God, my mother prayed in tongues. I, for hours, I'd say to my sister, Susie's praying about you. I said, lady, that's my name in Holy Ghost. Oh, she goes, oh, no. Don't worry. Don't worry. Really cool, right? <laughs> she, had, she wasn't anointed yet. Oh, don't worry. It's all okay. The preacher, I'm sitting behind this person. So I dodge, because I know who he's looking for. He's walking up and down, right? Look at that. Those Kenneth Copeland eyes, right? <laughs> he spots me like that from around that lady. May, I'm sorry, guy. And he goes, dog, come up here. Remember, I'm raised like this. I know what's going on. <laughs> I know if I don't take a step forward that I'm a dead man by midnight. Because God's like, eh. He pulls that cord. So I walk up there. He looks at me and starts giving me, again, the Copeland eyes and smiling at me. I go, listen, um, can I say ass? You already said it. Oh. So. <laughs> so to freak him out, right? Because I, I don't know if I would have. But uh, I tell him, listen, he starts coming at me, right? Like, he's got the Pentecostal mark. <laughs> right? And I'm like, oh, no. I am not going down in front of all these people. They don't even know I believe in this stuff. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to tell you right now, preacher, if you touch me and slay me in the, I'm like this. Let me tell you something, preacher. If you touch me and slay me in the Holy Ghost, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> And the guy in the front row, his little crony, did you hear what he just said? Really loud. He said he's going to kick our preachers of cole. <laughs> I'll change the word because I don't like it. So that's Hawaiian for. Mm. So I tell him, and I'm kicking yours next. Shut up. <laughs> the devil's always got to throw his own nickel in, right? Always. And I knew it, I could feel it. He goes, I don't need to touch you to slay you in the spirit. I go, preacher, come on, man. <laughs> I start crying. I cry easy. I wait for the interpretation. There is none. I'm like, oh, thank you. I go back to the pew. I grab her hand. She flicks me off. Because I need support right now, lady. <laughs> right. Don't you feel sorry for me? <laughs> yeah, right? I look at no. her, no, I look at her, she looks like the kid that stole all the Halloween candy from the other kids. <laughs> Baby Lisa, where's the candy? 
Did, would you ask me that again, Dad? <laughs> Baby Lisa, where's all the candy? <laughs> she doesn't even look at me. She's taller, so she don't even look down. She's like humiliated too, right? Oh, I had no. <laughs> They've all promised me, don't worry, we'll let him come and, you know, just be in church and, and not have everybody coming up to him. And then when, he, when the pastor called him up, I thought, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> I was waiting for him to run out the door any second. And he stuck it out, so I was pretty shocked. I get back to there, grab her hand, flick off. All of a sudden, the interpretation comes. Here's what it said. My warrior, you said the right words, finally. I have answered your prayer. I love you, my son. You ain't no sissy. I love you. I spoil you. I give you the favor of God. She says, for what you ask for is standing right in front of you. And here she is with the Holy Ghost strut, praise the Lord. She's like seven feet tall when she gets up there like that. <laughs> And she's doing, uh-oh, she starts doing the Holy Ghost twist. <laughs> and I look at her, and love hit me so hard. Nothing to do with lust till later. But I, that <laughs> love hit me so hard right in the head. And I went to these words, and I've only said it twice. I said it last night. Mother, behold thy son. Yeah, that show me the seat at the eye. You got it, Mommy. Thank you for praying. It's this lady. Oh, my God. I grab her hand again. Guess what she did? She squeezed it. <laughs> and the hair. I, I, I told in her ear, gotcha. <laughs> and it was on like, can I say that? Donkey Kong. I took her to the movie Jumanji. <laughs> yeah, what do you take Christians, right? <laughs> right? What do you do? Okay. I'm, I love you. So go ahead, tell more. I, I you like too. you talking about me. <laughs> go. When Dog and I thought that uh, life was ending, it actually was just the beginning. And. God has a plan for every single one of us. Every single one of us. And all he wants us to do is take a step towards him. When we're kneeling down and bent down and laid down before him, that's when. That's when he shows us what our destiny is, what our plan is. You want more? Come get it. You want what I have for you? Don't wait for me to bring it to you because I'm not going to serve it to you on a silver platter. I want you to come and get it. I want you to chase me. I want you to come after me. I want you in covenant with me. I want you to be close to me. I want you to hear my voice. I want you in my presence. I want you here with me. That's when. That's when he's going to show us exactly what he has for us. And get ready, because it's a ride. <laughs> and, and it's not always what you think it's going to be. But position yourself to be open to everything that he has for you. And if you, you, the reason for this is some may be in love and you've already got your spouse or you could needed this for a spousal thing. No. Where you came to is a faith faith. Faith is a substance. It, what's that mean? It's a substance. Wait a minute. What's that mean? You can grab it. Yeah. How do you get it? Hear, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You mean I got to read the Bible all day? Not necessarily just the Bible. But, but what? By the word of God. The word of God brought us together. Yeah. How do you? Faith is hope. I hope that I could get what Dog and Francie had. You heard it, you got it. This is a faith-based whole gig. All things are built on faith. 
When you see someone get out of the wheelchair and walk, I seen it two weeks ago. You talk about the faith that I had because I saw it and I heard it and I believed it. The Lord told me one time, what's the greatest thing you'd like to do? I'd like to take that little crippled baby that walks through that King Supers thing in the wheelchair back in the butcher department and lay hands on her and say in the name of Jesus, I may not have a lot of money, but what I have I give unto thee. Little baby, rise and walk. That's what I want. If a man can kill a baby, sexually assault a child at months old, that is demonic possession. Pure evil. On the flip side of that demonic possession is supernatural. That is common. Even an atheist has to believe that. I'm going after. She's got a gig there, and I'm sucking in and right in on it to the supernatural. And that's what you guys are here for, this whole faith thing with Kenneth Copeland and all these pastors. My God, I was so stoned last night, I got the munchies. <laughs> And then we went into the Holy restaurant. Ghost. We went into the restaurant. And Holy someone ghost. paid a hundred bucks on our tab. I like that stuff. <clears throat> and we kept it up. Brother, we almost got up. I told him, no, we were going to get up in Winchell's, wherever we were. A whole bunch of people would say, all right, right now in the name of Jesus, stand. Let's say a prayer. We were so hot. All I did last night is dream about miracles rising. God told me, stop looking for the signs, tell your people, start listening for the trumpet. God doesn't say, oh, all the angels don't know, Jesus don't know, we don't know the date. I doubt if he does either, because there's a lot of things that got to happen before it happens. But all of a sudden, what if it's one more thing? He's warned us for 10 years, we're starting the beginning of the last of times. How long you think he's going to wait till they get a picture of him creating the universe with the telescope they got right now that went back five billion years? You think God's going to be photographed? He don't like TMZ. <laughs> no, he does. I'm sorry. Sorry, Harvey. But you hear, this is a faith builder. You hear these stories. You see evidence. My leg grew. Let me see. You bite this. The cancer just threw up. Let me see. My God. Tell me the story. So stories like we have, we've got more. We have messages. Stories like we have, build your faith to get in to go to the next room. And let loose. Nobody's watching. Pretend like I did the mask singer. I had a mask on. I sang. I can't act like an idiot. And the, she told me, honey, no one knows it's you. Get out there, show dog. Show man. No, you think I could do that without a mask on? You got a mask on in there. It's called the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Go in there with that, especially you women. Especially you women. I'll tell you this really quick. I hit on this, but I'll tell you what. When you go to furthering education in your businesses every two years, you have to have the degree, correct? Yeah. There's that in the Holy Ghost world too, furthering education. We're getting more revelations than we ever have ever. Here's a tentative revelation. The Latin word, Catholics, you know, interpreted our Bible, King James, God bless him. <coughs> the, wor the word Holy Spirit is a masculine. In the Greek that it was written in, it's a feminine. Somebody stand up with your cell phone and look up the word begotten right now. And as soon as the first one to do it, stand up and read it to me. God said, let us create man in our own image, must be more than two, after our own likeness. He didn't just say what? Let's create man in our own image. Okay, go. Okay, we look like him. Likeness means every single part. <clears throat> now, wait a minute. What's, will you stand up and read it? What's it say? Begotten. My only begotten son. Okay. For today is my begotten son. My begotten, begotten. Right through all the begats. What's it say? Please. Wait a minute here. What? No, that's good. <laughs> that's the root, okay? The Greek is exactly the same. Wait a minute. 
is it true that the mama, the comforter, the one that you receive power from, don't you talk about my mama. <laughs> I was in prison in Texas in the 70s and you better not talk about our mamas. Boy, and my mama, when she got mad, you heard her baby, all oh, heaven broke loose. <laughs> you mean that could be the mother, the Holy Ghost? This is revelations that are coming to everybody. 666, and I'll stop. If you were smart enough, my interpretation of the Bible, <clears throat> if you were, I'm going to give you the combination to the Antichrist, 666. COVID, no. So, uh, <laughs> monkey box. <laughs> Dear Lord in heaven, hallowed be that name. Your guy had to do a monkey. You believe it? Dear God, how else do you get it? <clears throat> so, where was I? I lost it. <laughs> yeah, 666. It's, the Bible says, if you're smart enough, you'll be able to figure it out. Here's the numerical number. I'm sure there's scientists and everybody else tried so hard to do it. Someday somebody's just going to say it. Oh, it's Biden. Oh, it's Trump. Someday it's going to be so obvious. Right now we don't know. God, wouldn't you love to? Oh, I'd sell that to TMZ so quick. Wouldn't you love to have the Antichrist name? But you see how <coughs> it's biblical. It's biblical. How the longer the time goes, the more the saints come in, the more it's happening. Saints, there was one Copeland, one Hagen, sometimes Billy Graham, sometimes Earl Roberts. These guys, faith, miracles, there's a thousand today. He may still be the king, but look at them all. I'm telling you, right? <clears throat> you can't buy enough tapes. So the pouring the last days I shall pour, not drip, not dribble, not spit, pour out my spirit upon all tribes. And guess what, you millenniums? Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So get to prophesying. Sometimes when you say it, it ain't right. It's flesh. Go ahead. Because one out of three, it's straight from God. That's your assignment, you young kids. Prophesy. <clears throat> and guess where they're trying to hit us at now? At them young kids. Because they know they're coming up. We're prophets. Our generation, the one below me and the one below me, we're prophets. Wait till the real prophets get grown. These kids. And the devil's like, oh no, that's why he's taking us off at the children. Trying to. Sorry, I didn't mean to get it. You're good. <coughs> so we're done. Are we done? That's it. No. That's it. Oh. <laughs> I do. Don't y'all appreciate the transparency? Yeah. And, and them sharing their such an awesome story how God brought them both together. And I want y'all to tell uh, real quick about uh, your ministry and how you they do can that, get man. involved. And if they want to give, where do they go to give? Um, so we started, uh, we just started the Dog Foundation, and uh, which will carry two different parts. Dog has a new team of guys that he is working with called the Essentials. So uh, it will be Dog and the Essentials, and they are chasing down pedophiles, wife beaters. Sex traffickers. And on the other side of that, uh, Katie Souza and I are starting the House of Bounty. And we will start taking in women who are coming out of abuse and sex trafficking. And we want to get them healed and whole. And we want them to be able to walk out the life that God has for us and has for them, and how they can be transformed by him. Um, the same way that I was transformed, and that Katie was, and that dog was. And so that's where we're headed, and um, we're really excited about all that God's doing in and through us, and 
that we can use Dog's pl platform for the kingdom um, yeah. with how he has turned our lives around and put us in a path that uh, we were destined for. And so everything that we do now, uh, we want to do for his glory and to bring glory to the kingdom moving forward. And I want to say we want to we got a few minutes left okay. and we want to pray for y'all. Okay. And uh, I just want to say we had dinner. You referred to that a little last night. Yeah. We had dinner last night, but on their way out, just so you'll get a glimpse of his personal life, on his way out of here, he started praying with all of the convention workers, and they grabbed hands and held, and we were at a restaurant last night, and he could see the cooks in the kitchen were looking, there's dog, there's dog. Well, there's let me say dog. this, you know, he's talking here. <coughs> we walk out, he's so smooth. Whoa. Four people were sitting there, and they said to him, how do we get saved? Can we get saved? And he's like, well, would you like saved? I'm like, I thought I was cool. <laughs> <laughs> they said, they're vatas and vatos. They said, hey, how do we get saved? Oh. One said she just blew a couple of joints or something, right? Not that God <laughs> don't care if you smoke marijuana once in a while. But I was like, this is not happening. This is not... What are you laughing at? That? <laughs> this is that. Uh, I don't know where he gets roll of papers now, brother. <laughs> I thought, look at what he's doing. And they grabbed hands. He did the sinner's prayer. And he's like, it's that fast. The consonants changed on King Nebuchadnezzar as he threw the three fiery men, the boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, into that fire. His whole body changed. I looked after him after I prayed, and I'm like, my God, these kids are all so happy and bright and thank you, they told him. Wow, that, w no, is that amazing? He did that. So while he's bragging about us, whew, my friends do this. Well, well I just want to say, we want to pray for y'all, and the thank Lord you. is doing something awesome with I thought family. we were praying for them. Well, <laughs> we will. We, we want to pray for y'all because y'all are doing an awesome thing, and then we'll pray for y'all and then we'll dismiss. We're going to let them go so they can get in the service. And they're going over to this service, right? Yeah. The big yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. So, Lord, we just thank you for Dog and Francie. Stretch your hands for us to them. Lord, we just thank you that you'll increase their anointing, increase their, their heart for the lost, Lord. Increase their discernment so they can reach out and get these bad guys, Lord. We thank you for what you've done in their ministry, in their lives, Lord, what Dog has done and look what he's going to continue to do. And Lord Francie's heart, Lord Francie's ministry, Lord, we just thank you that you're, you're going to touch them and you'll touch many lives through their ministry. And Lord, we just thank you for that. We believe we receive it in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. You so Amen. Now, thank you. Thank you, folks. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Now, if you want to say a prayer for yeah, our, our team, and then we'll dismiss. So, Lord, thank you for this opportunity. You don't have to always close your eyes. Yeah, Francie taught me that. Wait till you say a sinner's prayer right in the face. Saving. You don't always have to close your eyes. You get him to say, in Jesus' name, amen. Keep staring. Wait till what you see. Yes. No, I'm telling you, I just learned this. Yes. Francie's teaching me. That's my mentor, teaching me all kind of these things. So we pray right now. Thank you, Lord. First of all, we're here to get a blessing. Uh, we're here to receive a blessing and to also, I guess it does say that, give before you receive. So right now in the name of Jesus, we're here to give a blessing. To everyone from now on we ever meet, and we're going to suck up that Holy Ghost in there so hard. We're going to pretend like we got masks on, and we're going to let our little light shine. God is building, we know this, Father God, a front line we read last night the scriptures, Jesus said, as I pray, Jesus said, the people came to him and said, Master, they're stealing our, all our clothes. And he goes, well, sell some of them, buy a sword. <laughs> Is that a Republican? <laughs> and then he said, we didn't come here for twiddly winks. In the beginning of the last times, we come for war. Oh. You believe that? Pick your side. I'm drawing a line in the sand. 
your kids will turn against you, your bosses will turn against you, <clears throat> the electricity, the government will turn against you, but you stay on my side and you're going to win. We pray that right now, Jesus, because all of us here, obviously, you don't have to be a, an anointed one to see we are your front lines. The Bible says, and your sons and daughters will turn against you. The daughters and sons that think we're caca, Lord God, oh well. The Bible says it's going to happen. How can I tell about your son or your daughter, lady, when mine's out of whore? You know, I got to get my, no, you don't. The Bible says they're going to go mother against daughter against son. Don't worry about it. All the brothers and sisters got along in the Bible. Let's start with Cain and Abel. Baloney. Your kids don't get it, go on to someone else's. Standing here is a product of a mother's prayer. I will never let them turn forever away. It don't say they won't backslide. So, Father, we get all that, we got all that, we take all that, we go to this next meeting to bless and to receive. If I get blessings, I want to receive goosebumps and stuff, get stoned, and I like the spirit will a lot. Yeah. In, in Jesus' precious name, amen. Let me say this, let me say this. Are any of y'all believing for any family members to be saved? Right now, I want to let y'all know, Acts 16.31 says, Believe in the Lord, you will be saved in your household. So, Father, right now, yes. all those family members, Lord, we call them into the kingdom, Lord. We thank you. You said that we have a promise that we will be saved, and then our household will be saved. So, Lord, we thank you for that. We believe we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Real quick about that, 27 years old, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin. I don't want to go to rehab. And I said, no, no, no. What's her name? She died. 27. There's about 15 of them. Jimi Hendrix. Chris Farley. Who does she make a check out to, honey? See, the Lord told me there's going to be one person here who give a huge check, and no one else needs to. Listen, 27 years old is the, that's it. What did Klein, what did our dad tell us? The. When you're done, that's it. It's up to you in Jesus now. Age of accountability. Come on. No, you got to study that. It's incredible. Yes. 27. I, well, thank God I was 15, my mother told me. That's it. Between you and Jesus now. She didn't know, again, that it's 27. So that one, where's the brother? Right there? Yeah. You kid's going to get saved. If he don't, he will, though. Because if you raise him in the way of the Lord... They shall never depart. They'll stray. Of course they will, but they're going to come back. So, so don't, you know, oh, they're 17, 18, 19, 20, 24, ah, 25. Ah, I got 13. Together we have 15. I have 12. One's in heaven. Believe me, I've been a dad since I was 15. I know. I put some of them in Catholic schools. Don't worry about it. What other stuff have you got? You're good at the Lord telling you to pray for stuff. Ma'am, you okay? Oh, go ahead. We're, we just, we just want to thank y'all for coming today. And we want to let you know, we have evangelism training in here every morning at 8 o'clock, every night at 6. And we train you how to go out on the streets and do what he was talking about we did last night. So we want y'all to know that, and we're here to help you, and we actually go out on the streets. We do a training, and we go out on the streets. Wow. So we want y'all to be a part of it, and uh, we, we thank y'all for coming. Pastor Brian has a few more things he wants Let's to share, and then we're going to Thank you, Pastor Brian.